Um, and I am going to talk about the things that we have done uh, in the BBC over the last uh, few years to prepare ourselves and establish ourselves for convergence with the internet. I joined uh, BBC television four years ago. Before that, I worked uh, in BBC radio, uh, where we were developing on-demand services, podcasting, uh, interactive services. But when I moved to television, um, I made our priority to focus on the BBC's television programmes. Now, many new media people look at programmes and think, that's the old world. TV's dead. Why are you doing all that old stuff? You should be focusing on new web originals, transmedia. Um, but I've always thought, if we have this incredible range of programmes, why are we not exploiting them? And when I joined the BBC, uh, BBC television, I did a very simple thing. I searched for one of our most popular programmes on Google. Uh, the programme is called Friday Night with Jonathan Ross, big entertainment show. And there was a website for it, or there was a, a, a result. Third, behind two American sites. But when I clicked on it, we were offering an error page because we had deleted the page after it had broadcast because we were thinking as broadcasters. Now, we established that only about 20% of any of our programs had any presence on the internet. And I believe that I am not going to tell the future today either. I'm not a futurologist. I don't know the answer. But I do think that will most video be consumed over the internet in the future? Actually, I doubt it. I still believe broadcast is a very, very efficient and powerful means of delivering video. But I do think that audiences will increasingly search for, discover, and choose what to watch using the internet and IP-enabled EPGs, etc. So I believe if your program is not on the internet, it will become invisible. So we established a system where every single program that the BBC offers and every episode of every program has an automatically generated website. And we launched the first one in October 2007. Now, I don't know if you know the program Doctor Who uh, in, uh, in this country. <laughs> Doctor Who? Um, okay, so it is a big major in the UK, Saturday night, drama, family entertainment, science fiction. And so when we showed this page to the program team, they were not too impressed. They found it a little bit basic. But over the years, we have developed this basic layer to provide increasing information and richness, either fully automated or able to be easily updated by production teams. I'll come back to that in a moment. But probably the biggest initiative during the past four years, three years, was the launch of the BBC iPlayer in December 2007. And it has already been spoken about many times, uh, so I won't talk too much about it. This was the original design, and we recently redesigned it to add in a whole range of new social features and recommendation features. The audiences for it have grown very impressively, and in October we hit a new record of nearly 140 million 
requests for programmes. Now I will just pause for a moment to say we have heard many figures this morning, millions, billions of internet video consumption. I would just urge a word of caution because 139 programme requests represented less than 1% of BBC television consumption uh, that month. Considerably less. And I read a recent uh, press release by YouTube uh, in the UK saying that they had just, uh, they were now delivering 1 billion minutes of video a month being consumed, which I quickly calculated was about half a percent of TV consumption in the UK. It's significant, it's important, and it's growing, but don't forget how important everything that we have been doing for the last 50 years remains in people's lives. So, we now have an episode, a, a website for every episode of every programme that we ever make, radio, TV, local, national, international, and increasingly we are able to enrich the basic data of programme title, series information, with a clip, the ability to watch on demand in iPlayer or just in a short clip when it's not in iPlayer. Um, credits information and just simple things that audiences do like and appreciate such as what the music is that was played in the show and the ability to click on one of those artists and then we've also created a music database spanning all of our radio and TV uh, output that pulls in feeds from Wikipedia, Music Brains, and creates pages for every artist. And it's laying these foundations on the internet for the BBC that is going to be critical, I believe, to our long-term uh, success. Because there are now millions and millions and millions of permanent, unique pages for everything the BBC broadcasts, programmes, music, and as I will show you later, in some other areas. All of which enables audiences to link to these things, to talk about them, to recommend them, and all of which makes us much more prominent and findable in Google and other search engines. We believe the only way to do this sustainably and efficiently is to transform our production teams from television production teams to multi-platform production teams, delivering content across as many platforms and devices as is possible. So we have de developed very simple production tools to enable any team to take control of their web page and to update it, to enhance it, to make it better. And we don't pay extra to do this. We say it is now uh, a necessity. And these pages also enable us to create um, a central place around which all social uh, activity can congregate. So we have created uh, what we call buzz pages, uh, which, um, where we um, watch what activity is happening in blogs, on Twitter, in Facebook, where people are talking about or mentioning these, prog these uh, sites. Uh, so this was a, le a recent program, Sherlock in the UK. Has it come here yet? You have a treat when it comes. It's really outstanding. Um, and um, 
here we are tracking what buzz there is around that program on the internet. We create a unique page that aggregates all of those blog mentions, comments. We have to moderate it so this is not without uh, um, limits. Um, but we think it's very important to reflect and reward user engagement around our programs. And these are comments from people on Twitter who have noticed that we are reflecting their review, their blog post, or their tweets about our programs. So we create a nice circular reward system with our audiences. We have successfully exported the iPlayer across a whole range of platforms and devices. And now it is our challenge to map our whole program architecture onto these new platforms. And in particular, connected televisions represent an enormous challenge for everyone in this room to make it as easy as possible for audiences to find and choose what to watch, whether it is live or whether it is on demand. And we have identified nine different ways that audiences might come across our content. In the EPG, I won't remember them all, I'm sorry, but in the EPG, in the on-demand section, on the open internet, uh, the manufacturer may have their own section where we are syndicated into. Um, uh, there may be a separate apps area. And this could all get extremely confusing for audiences who just want to, I believe, be able to go click, 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 watch. Or even better, click, click, watch. And our next challenge is to open up the BBC's archive of 90 years and to map all of that into this program's environment so that audiences can stretch back across the whole history of the BBC and we can um, capture our role in that history of the 20th century. So that was what we were doing with our programs. Now let me give a couple of examples of bigger uh, initiatives that we are now able to do because we have organized all of that program information. So firstly, I've been showing you a lot of PowerPoint, so I will give you a, uh, the, the, uh, I will give your eyes the rest of some video. Whoops. Now. The murs only attack from beneath, trapping the fish against the surface. But they push the herring within range of the gulls. It's a feeding frenzy. is set for the mightiest predator of them all. The humpbacks have reached their feeding grounds. <laughs> 